there was no pressure. It was just a safe open space to talk. A lot of people reached out to me and said that they, from the video, they could see that there's been a lot of growth. We went out to eat afterwards, which was enjoyable. <laughs> so, yeah, good experience overall. Hello and welcome to another episode of After Work. Sadadeen, how was your week? My week's been alright, man. It's been another week of self-isolation um, and it's been a time where I've been trying to focus on maintaining my health meanwhile being spending most of my time indoors so i found myself going on jogs quite late at night every day um, and i've taken small solace in having different routes every other day to appreciate different parts of the city i haven't really appreciated or seen before been the most exciting thing i've been up to this week man how about yourself? Good to hear that you're taking the advice of the government. <laughs> Only going out for one jog a day. <laughs> Making sure that you keep two, two metres away from everyone whilst you're jogging, I assume. Um, but yeah, man, my week was my week was peaceful, man. Um, I'm starting to get used to this quarantine lifestyle. Um, it can be a bit frustrating. I'm sure you share the same opinion. Like, the weather's been really nice this week. And I've just been looking out my window like, why am I not outside? Um... But I would say the highlight of my week um, was taking part in Team Upside's lockdown learning challenge. Um, so we released a promo vid last week um, and I'm, I've am i set myself a challenge at the beginning of the week to wake up at 6am every single day. Um, so yeah, my relationship with waking up early and having a morning routine has is like has been up and down, like... I used to do it quite often and then I took a hiatus of sorts. Um, but I, I've, I've been doing it this week and it's been really beneficial. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it up for the rest of the rest of the summer or the rest of the holiday. Um, but yeah, man, uh, let's get into this. Let's get into this reflection session. So Saadadeen, man, what was your reflection from Samuel's episode? So my theme that I went away and thought about was being open to taking inspiration from everyone around us. What about your father inspires you? I think it's just the way he carries himself as a man. Like it was for him, it's all about honor and respect. It's like even if you're going through a situation mm. and let's say it's not pleasing you, be be true to yourself and afford people that respect of letting them know mm. that. This does not sit well with you. So they might ask the question, what kind of advice did your father give? But from what I'm getting, it's almost like he didn't even have to say anything. He just had to exist and yeah, do yeah. what he was doing. <laughs> and that was, the yeah. yeah, 100%. For me, this made me really think about taking inspiration from everyone around us. So that means not just family and friends, but also strangers um, and being open to being inspired. In Samuel's example, he spoke about a particular figure, his father. And for many of us, parents are major role models and figures that we shape our habits and character around but i think it's also important to look at the people that come in and out of our lives and look at the characteristics that they might have that we can adopt one thing this made me think about especially in this period of quarantine is a good friend of mine zacharia and zachary zachary is a very disciplined person and such is his discipline that is able, he's able to revise in his room and, and be very productive in his room and focused. And for me, this was a real challenge. I used to always say to, I used to always say to my mother, like, I can't do any work in my room. That's why I have to go out to the library or coffee shop or whatever that is. And my mom used to always say, that's a luxury you're giving yourself. What happens when there'll come a time when you're, you sh you're, you're not able to leave your room, you're not able to leave your house. <laughs> And I always used to be like, what kind of time is that, is that ever going to be? Like, why would I not be able to leave my house? Of course, I'll always be able to leave. Like, that's what libraries are for. That's what coffee shops are for, so to speak. So, lo and behold, <laughs> there comes a time where you actually are not even allowed to leave your room. Um, so, for me, I've taken sort of that advice from my mother and, and seeing... Zachariah just hanging around him I remember this time last year I'd go to his room and we'd have food and, and chat and chill just seeing his his room set up and how everything was 
and I would knock on his door sometimes and he'd be in the middle of coding something or doing some project. For me, just seeing that was very powerful, just being in close proximity to someone that was doing something that I found difficult, rubbed off on me, and it just made me feel like, you know what, there's someone that I know that I'm good friends with that is able to do this thing. So maybe that means I can do it. Maybe this is a door, maybe this is an opportunity for me to try it. Um, So I've really tried to channel um, that in, in this period for me now and it's been reasonably successful so far um there's definitely room to improve and there's definitely ways i can be more productive and less distracted on that reflection i have a question for you suleiman tell me about someone that you've been taking inspiration from and the lesson that they've taught you or you've taken from them that you've tried to implement in your day-to-day so the, the topic of role models and inspiration is quite like a it's quite a loaded it's quite a loaded concept and it's like it's thrown around a lot um like this person's my role model this person's my role model um but in terms of who my who I've taken inspiration from in like recent times I'd probably say it's you bro um <laughs> like I've known you for around a year and a half um I feel like I really got to know you uh, and I feel like our, our friendship has really grown the last 12 months or so especially since we've started this podcast. Um, And I'd say that you're someone that has very high levels of emotional intelligence, EQ, and like like very high levels of empathy as well. Um, And there are many examples or instances where I feel like your character has really shined through, um, for me at least. And um, but but there's one, there's one example that I'm going to share today. (laughs) So, it was me and you, and there was uh, there was also one of our friends, and we were chilling um, in a coffee shop last summer in Cafe Nero, Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> um, we were having like a project meeting, um, myself and you, um, and we were talking about the podcast, and we were talking about all of the exciting plans that we had um, when we started u- for the for when we started university again. Um, but then, yeah, one of our friends joined us. Um, and I continue to talk about the podcast and our project to you in front of him. Um, and then when when my when our friend left, um, you uh, kind of reflected on the on the on the moment, and you told me that it it wasn't best way. It, it didn't feel right that we were talking about the podcast in front of our friend because it could potentially have made him feel like he was left out of the conversation. Um, and that generally that's not the best character and that's not the best etiquette to have. Um, so yeah, on a practical level, I've tried to take away that piece of advice so that whenever I'm in the middle of a conversation and a new person joins the group, I either try to give them context about what we're talking about or I just completely change the discussion topic so that they feel more involved. Um, so yeah, I'd like to say thank you, bro. You've, you've honestly been an inspiration. Whilst watching Samuel's episode, one of the themes that like particularly st- um, stuck out for me was the idea of personal development and the virtue of being uncomfortable. Having a growth mindset was so apparent in like a number of instances throughout our conversation. For example, when Samuel was talking about his mindset at university and his approach to meeting new new people at Imperial College London. My degree is four years. So I'm using these four years to just for personal development. Mm. I do not want to. I feel like that, that's what I told you in terms of Cardinal Wiseman. I stuck with people from outside of school who looked like me, fought like me. And I grew up with them. But it's like, I'm done with that. Like, I Yes, you're my friend and we can talk. Mm. But I need to expose myself to greater things. Mm. You see? And it's not to say that they're stunting my growth and whatnot, mm. but it's just putting myself in positions where mm. I'm uncomfortable mm. and I'm forced to develop myself. Yeah. Also, when he was conceptualizing hard work and the process of becoming successful. I don't feel like you can be comfortable and, and still strive and push against boundaries. Mm. Because for you to even get to that, your point of success, you have to be overcoming hurdles. Just ju- jumping over hurdles aren't, isn't comfortable. Mm. <laughs> Like Samuel, I, I firmly believe that you can't be comfortable while striving and pushing against boundaries and you can't be comfortable whilst developing as an individual. Um, 
I don't know why we <laughs> agree on the topic so much. Maybe it's because we both grew up on Have Look Estate. I don't even, I don't know. Um, but I definitely share a similar view to him on that topic. Um, and based on that reflection, I went away and I did some research. I did some kind of reading um, into why, I, I did some reading into why we should all be comfortable being uncomfortable and how we could, and how we can practically implement that philosophy into our daily lives. Um, so on the question of why and how, I came across the work of Tim Ferriss. So essentially, what he argues is that it's essential to become comfortable with the physical sensations of discomfort because it enables us to ask for things that we're not used to asking for. It enables us to say things that we're not used to being able to say. It enables us to negotiate in ways that we're not used to negotiating. And it ultimately enables us to speak truth to power when and where needed. Um, so yeah, and recently, um, I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube, but Tim Ferriss has launched a online video series called The Comfort Challenge, where he provides practical tips to exercising the muscle of like discomfort. So some of these tips are things that me and you can do any day, um, like throughout our daily lives. And I'll quickly list them for you. Um, so the first thing that me and you can do is we can maintain eye contact in conversations. That's like one uncomfortable thing we can do to, to build that muscle. A second thing we could do is propose solutions and make decisions rather than ask other people for their opinion. So like when your friend asks you, where shall we eat? Just come up with a solution instead of saying, where do you want to eat? Um, and like a third tip that he, he gives is uh, becoming comfortable with saying no. Because he essentially says that time is our most precious and non-renewable asset. So we need, to be, we need to be prudent. We need to be smart about how we give away our time, essentially. Um, and then the fourth tip he says is um, being comfortable having uncomfortable conversations with people that you disagree with. And a particular quote that I think you're gonna, that you're going to find interesting as well is he says that success in life can be measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations you've had and the, and the number of uncomfortable actions you've been willing to take. So my question for you, Sadadeen, is when was the last time you had an uncomfortable conversation with someone because you potentially disagreed with them or had like a criticism? And what's your general advice for navigating those types of social interactions? One thing that springs to mind is my time during a work experience placement. And my time at this work experience placement was coming to an end. <clears throat> and I'd done something that I'd never done before. And that was directly out of my own volition, ask for feedback. And I made it clear that I didn't want to hear positive feedback and things I'd done well. I wanted to hear uh, things that I could improve. And for me, this was uncomfortable for a number of reasons. But mostly it was because I hadn't. I hadn't had this conversation before. And the reason why answers your second question, which is how to navigate them. For me, it was about seeing the bigger picture um, and just being aware of the why. So why am I asking you this? And being able to see the bigger picture and that why, which is because you, you want to be better than you were yesterday. It's looking at the bigger picture and knowing and trusting that why. Here's what our good friend and regular listener, Donna, had to say after our conversation with Samuel. I thought that Samuel's points about challenge, change, variation and growth were really valuable ones. Um, I really liked what you said about the power of education to change your circumstances. It was quite, a, that was a really powerful message and um, one that really needs to be kind of reiterated over and over again to a lot of people. It's not saying that people have to be at university or have to be at Russell Group University to end up doing something but it's really important for people to know that actually if you can strive to be the best that you can be through education it's actually really valuable. The comments about studying were spot on and, and I think it's very very true the best way for young people to change and avoid certain social obligations is to kind of knuckle down and kind of just say actually I'm, I'm in this zone at this moment in time because um, you find that people generally accept the distance that you that's created when they know you're actively working on something like education, career, family and health. Um, but it'll be interesting to know what his um, friends feel about what he said about them not helping him to get to where he wanted to be. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see what space do these people now occupy in his life. Um, I think it's a really valuable message he's given and I think people need to hear it. And sometimes the very people that he's kind of distancing himself from are the people who really would need it the most. As Suleiman said in one of the podcasts, you guys are trying to share these gems in your own circles with others who may not have access to their messages. So we need to be careful that we do not inadvertently isolate them in the delivery. I definitely agree though, being able to isolate yourself and free yourself from distraction. It does require a lot of discipline. There's loads of other obligations. You've got to be loyal to these people, do this, and you're not acting this way, you're not acting that way. And I think for him, that whole message of isolating yourself from all of those, um, anything that's going to take you off your path was actually really, really important. That is it for this week. To keep in touch, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. That's Afterwork underscore UK on Instagram and Twitter and Afterwork podcast everywhere else. If you took even one thing away from this episode, give us a review on Apple Podcasts and comment on our YouTube video. Any thoughts or suggestions for future episodes, DM us on our socials or shoot us an email at afterwork258 at gmail.com. In any case, see you same time, same place next week.